Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Shed Plays. Welcome to a new Let's Play here in EU4. This is Cossacks 1.14.2. They've patched Cossacks a little bit. It still has some bugs, like the UI still disappears after a few hours of gameplay. Uh, there's some other things that are still wonky with it. But for the most part, Cossacks is up and running. And one of the exciting things about Cossacks is playing as a horde. They have completely revamped the horde mechanics. You have a, uh, an, what is it called? Uh, not an entity. Estate. You have an estate called tribes. So if you're playing in Europe somewhere, you get these three estates called the uh, nobility, the clergy, and the burghers. And here in the hordes, you only get one estate called the tribes. So it's a little easier to manage, and the tribes give you some nice stuff. In Europe, the burghers and the hordes and the nobility, they all give you monarch points, which is nice. But for the tribes, they give you manpower, and they also give you a general and some free units and stuff like that. They're kind of cool as far as just getting getting things going because playing as a horde can be tough. But today we're going to go for the Great Khan achievement. And to do that, we're going to play as the Golden Horde. Let's get in there. Iron Man. I'm going to overwrite this one. We, we were playing earlier. We got about 20 years in, 30 years in. We just fucking restart. It was just too slow. All right. So we start off with one, we get 11 soldiers and three cav. Now, believe it or not, I'd rather have the, the, the ratio the other way. I'd rather have 11 cav and three soldiers, but this is what we have to deal with. <laughs> so I think the first thing I'm gonna do is, uh, we could go eat Riazan, Circassia, Gaza, Kumuk, Nogai, Kazan, Crimea, Muscovy, whatever. We could eat any of these guys. Crimea is probably the best target for our first piece of aggression here. So why don't we fabricate on him on Azaraba. And I want to get an alliance over here with Uzbek. And I want to work on relations with the Ottomans. So let's put them to friendly. And you can do this now. This is a nice thing on Cossacks. You can say, hey, hey, dude over there, I want to be friendly with you. And you know, maybe they'll want to be friends with you someday. Like what I could do is set the Timurids as a rival. Can I set the Timurids as a rival? I cannot set the Timurids as a rival. Damn. Uh, I'm going to set Crimea as a rival. And I'm going to set Kazan and uh, no guy so we're going to start off with crimea kazan and no guy as my rivals uh alliance with uzbek yeah and at some point i'd like to get an alliance over here with uh, the auto turks that'd be great let's get relations up take a look at our leader there's our alliance with uzbek very nice let's take a look at our leader he is a 002 pile of garbage we're going to focus on admin to start out so another change with the hordes is you can now raise provinces down. And this little button here like this, raise province. Only non-core provinces can be raised. So the idea is you go to war, you take land in the war, you take land in the peace deal. And after you've pieced out and taken the land, before you core it, you raise it down. And this lowers the development down. To, you can get it all the way down to, to just three development, just one, one, once. Once it hits three development, you cannot raise them anymore. So you can raise most provinces. And once you do that, then you core it. And then you can't raise it ever again. But the idea is when you raise province, you get monarch points out of it. So you get some admin, diplo, and, mo and military monarch points. You also get horde unity, which has replaced uh, legitimacy of your, of your king and your heir. So you, your king and your heir doesn't matter, your con and your, I should say, doesn't matter what their legitimacy is. So when they take over, just whatever, it doesn't matter. Horde unity is different entirely. It's a number based on uh, raising provinces and random events that come in through the game. And it lowers pretty rapidly. It lowers at three per year by default. So, and as your development increases, it starts lowering more quickly. So when you get like a thousand development, this will lower maybe five per year. And the idea is you're supposed to keep going to war and you keep raising provinces and that raises your horde unity back up to a hundred. And as a horde, it can be pretty easy to keep your unity up so long as you're constantly conquering land. If you ever stop conquering land, your horde unity can drop pretty low. And you can run into disasters and problems like that. I'm starting to lose my voice because I've been sick the past week. So bear with me. I am still getting over my cold. But yeah, I think the first war is probably going to be on Crimea. It might be Circassia, Gazic, Kumik. It could be any of these guys. Riazan's a good first target since they're so weak at the start of the game. Hey, Mr. Phobos. There's a cat on my desk. What's up, Phobos? We'll see who Crimea gets allies with. If he allies Kazan and Nogai, then we may not we may not go to war with Crimea first. I don't know. Let's see. Where the Chimerids ally Kazan. Okay. What about Crimea? Any allies for Crimea? No? No allies for Crimea. 
Crimea allied Kazan. Oh, shit. And no guy. Okay, so he allied both these idiots. That's kind of a problem. I wonder if I could get Uzbek to help me with a war. You know what I could do is just to go to war with no guy instead of Crimea. Because Uzbek, what I can do is I can promise Uzbek some land, call them in, and then Crimea will join on my side, and I can co-belligerent them, so we'll be fighting Kazan, no guy, and Crimea, but Uzbek will be helping. Do I want to do that? I don't have to co-belligerent Crimea. Maybe I don't want to do that. Hmm. It's tempting. No, I think I'll do it. I think I'll do it. But I don't know if I want to co-belligerent. You know what? I won't. I'm not going to co-belligerent. Okay, let's do it. Let's go to war. I'll declare for Rin. Since it's right here. Where's Rin? Rin. Done. Alright, Uzbek. Come to war, dude. And I'm... You know, I think I will focus on no guy. I'm going to focus on no guy. Let's go. Let's go, punk. Alright, so this is our first war. There we go. Welcome to EU4. It's time for war. This is how you play hordes. You just go to war all the time. It's a it's a good strategy. Conquer Simbursk. Simbursk. Sure, I'll conquer Simbursk. I don't think we can do it right now, but someday. Come on, Uzbek. Let's go to war, dude. How many troops do they have? 15 and 6. All right. Uh, let's make our king into a general. Hey, he's not bad. A 2-1, two, one, a 2-1-2-1. Two, one, two, one. He's got a siege pip. I like that. Really, is that all you have? I will squish that. Where's your army, no guy? Oh, there he is. Okay, now I'm in a bad spot. I've committed to the combat, and uh, he'll probably be fine. We'll win. Maybe. The thing is, we're fighting in his territory, and in his territory, he gets a 25% shock bonus. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But neither of us have many calves, so it might not matter. It might be okay. Yeah, we got him. Nice. Nice. Oh, that's such a good first battle for us. I didn't even expect to fight him there. I didn't know where his army was. Just came out of the woods. He's like, oh, oh shit, here I am. Here I am. All right, let's group up. Do I just want to full merge? I'm just, well, I'm just going to full merge. Fuck it, because I don't even want these regular soldiers. I'm going to start recruiting some cav down here. Let's get some real cav. Some real cav. All right. You guys are going to come down here. Now, do you have any claims or cores or anything over here? You do not. But you have rivaled him, right? Yeah? And let me look at his interest. Now, this is something you need to pay attention. When you do what I did and you call someone in promising them land, then you need to look at their interest. Their, it, I guess it's called diplomatic feedback. And it shows you what they want. They want this province, this province. They want they basically want everything that they border. So I'm free to take everything else. Okay. Oh, right, my merchants. Right, I need to move my merchants. Merchants. We currently have a merchant in Crimea. Get out of there. And we don't have a merchant in our capital. So let's get our merchant in our capital. There we go. Done. Demand manpower. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, let's demand manpower right now. That is a great idea. Oh, we can't do it. Can't do it until we get loyalty and influence up to 50. Oh, so we have to give him some land first. Um, I guess I could give him some land right now. All right, tribes, you're going to get some land. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else? There we go. All right, let's demand some shit. Sup, dudes? I want contribute warriors, which gives us 5,400 manpower. It looks like it's about one, it's 25% of your max manpower. That's pretty good. They lose 10 loyalty for 10 years, and then in 10 years, you can do it again. So good. Get out of that manpower. Uh, you can also do raise host, which increases their influence for 10 years, and it gives you five free cap. I'm going to do that too. Why not? Fuck it. Caught, you get five free cab that cost you no money and no manpower. It's just so nice. Now, if you're playing in Europe, like Poland or Venice or any of these guys, you get different estates. You get the burghers, the clergy, and the nobility. And from them, you can demand monarch points or money, 
which are also pretty nice. It's just kind of a different mindset, right? As a horde, you need the manpower and the uh, soldiers, but in Europe, you may just want the money and the monarch points. Are we going to build forts near the Muscovy border? No. In fact, I don't want this fort. Get rid of these forts. Forts are forts are awful. The problem with forts as a horde is you just... Oh god, here comes Crimea. The problem with forts as a horde is you're in a situation where you need money, and the forts just... They're just too expensive. Where the... Are you going to my capital, you little shitbag? I bet you are. This guy's a little shitbag. Where are you going? Where are you going, Crimea? I need to know. He's going to my capital. You know what? That's... That's actually not a bad place to go. His general... Oh, really? He got his... <laughs> he got four pips. He got one siege and three shock. That's like the perfect starting general. Holy crap, I am jelly. I am so jelly. Oh, I also got a free general, didn't I? Uh, I did, it's a 2-1. So the other thing, when you demand raise host, you get five cav, which costs you no manpower and no money. And you also get a general with 20 traditions. So that's kind of cool. In other words, you save 50 monarch points. So let's just put him in the, put him in the army. I'm going to set Crimea as a target for Uzbek. Hopefully they'll go over there. Because I don't want to siege down that fort. You need nine soldiers to siege that down. I don't want to do that. Okay, he's going to siege my capital. That's fine. We'll kick him out of there. We get a 25% shock bonus in our home territory. We'll be fine. We'll beat him up. We have... Uh, one shock versus his three shock will still be fine. Oh, look at this. He stopped in tin. Interesting that he stopped in tin. Okay. That's good. We can squish that army. In fact, let's go squish it now. No time like the present. Squish. Ha! Ah, goes the weasel. We get there for the end of the month? No. Oh, look at that freaking morale bonus, man. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Muscovy just declared on Kazan. Muscovite conquest of Perm. Oh, shit. Shit just got real, yo. What's up, no guy? Good battle for us. It's too bad it wasn't fought on my territory, but still a good battle for us. Hey, Uzbek is going to beat up Crimea. That's fine with me, I guess. Muscovy wants access. You can fuck off, dude. I'm going to... I can't fabricate, right. Fuck off, Muscovy. Uh, why don't I go ahead and carpet siege... Let's get this out of the way. We need to carpet siege at some point. Might as well do it now. Okay. And get our main army out of there. If I can select it. Here we go. QQ declared war on Georgia. They're just going to go vassalize Georgia. That's fine. Sort of fine. Sort of fine. Oh, shit. All right, so he's retreating to his capital. We're going to follow him and kill him. Although it looks like Uzbek is going to do that for me. So let's not do that.
Yeah, Uzbek is following him. This is good. If Uzbek will siege that capital for me, then I don't have to worry about sieging any forts. That's fantastic. All right, let us kill that stack. And... Okay, no guy is regrouping. All right, let's meet up in Sarai. Figure out what to do. Here comes Uzbek. Go get him, Uzbek. Go get him. Alright, let's start killing these little no-guy stacks. Uzbek is sieging the capital. That's fantastic. Um, I should probably leave one guy there just in case Uzbek decides to withdraw from the battle. Or if he pieces out of the war or something before it finishes sieging. So at least have a presence there. Okay, good. Okay, start sieging this shit down. Where are you going? Orda. All right. Hardy, hardy. Not the best battle for us, because it's taking place in foreign territory. Always want to have battles as a horde in your own territory. But it's still... Look at that. We still squished them. Nice. I'll take it. All right. Take out the soldiers. You guys are going to go siege that. And you guys can go siege that. Now let's spread out and carpet siege. Now, I don't mind giving Uzbek a little bit of land here. He thinks he's done 44% of the work, so he'll expect 44% of the land. I'm not going to give him that much land. I'll give him a little bit. I might not give him anything. I mean, at the end of the day, we're going to have to beat up Uzbek anyway. All right, let's fabricate on Riazan, who has no allies. Because it's the best option. If, if you're a small nation. Look at this. He is surrounded by three of the world's great powers. Lithuania, Muscovy, and of course, the Golden Horde. He has no allies. Because why would you ever have allies, right? Why would you ever have allies? Allies are stupid. Okay, that's pretty much the war. Just a matter of waiting for sieges to finish. And then we have to figure out what the next war should be. Now, Crimea was not a co-belligerent, so I can't full annex him. Normally, I'd be able to full annex him, but he's not a co-belligerent. So what are you going to do? Muscovy might be a good target for the next war. I mean, Riazan first, but after Riazan, Muscovy is a good target. But between wars here, I would like to get the Ottomans as an ally. And to do that, I kind of need to rival the Tim Tims. So I think what we need to do is make sure we get enough land down here that we can border the Tim Tims. And then, then we should be able to rival the Tim Tims because we're going to lose no guy as a rival after this war. We're going to eclipse him for sure. No guy holds Kazakh territory. Take that land. 
Oh, oh really? Oh, so if we do want a vassal, this province would be amazing for a vassal because Kazakh has cores over all of this land down here. I had not even considered that, but you're right. These are Kazakh cores. Do I really want a vassal though? The reason we had to restart is because having vassals is retarded. They don't do shit. Genoa started a war on Crimea. That's hilarious. I'm not sure if I want Kazakh as a vassal, you know? I, I, that's... I don't know. I'll think about it. See if there's a money-saving advisor. There's not going to be a money-saving advisor. Our, bi our biggest expense is army maintenance. And if we got an advisor to lower army maintenance by like 10% or whatever, I don't even know if there is one like that. All right, so Poland got their union over Lithuania. Okay. Even if there is an advisor for like 10% army cost reduction or something, we would only be saving fi uh, half a ducat, but the advisor cost is one ducat. Look at the advisor cost. One ducat. So even if it wouldn't be worth it, there's no advisor we can get that'd be worth it right now. All right, let's get out of here. So we need to finish this siege down here. Just fast forward until that's done. Currently fabricating on Crimea. We're also fabricating on Riazan. Assassination of a noble. Lose unity or lose admin points. I'm going to lose the unity because we're going to get unity back after this war. You'll see. You'll see. You'll shoot your eye out. Really? Uzbek thinks he's done 54% of the work? You're an idiot, Uzbek. You have not done 54% of the work. All right, so let's peace out Crimea. Oh, I don't have my claim yet. I'm not sure that really matters. Or maybe I'll just piece them out together. All right, we got our claim on Riazan. Very nice. Should get our claim on Crimea pretty soon here. Uh, might as well fabricate on the other province up here as well. Tula. Tula, Tula. All right, there we go. 100%. Uh, okay, so we have to decide whether we want whether we want to take Kazakh as a vassal. We could potentially have Kazakh as a vassal. We could also take Sibir as a vassal and just feed them both off of Uzbek's lands. But if we vassal feed, that means we're not raising the territory. I'd rather raise the land than vassal feed. So no, I'm not going to take the vassals. All right, give me that. And give me all of this. Hundred and seven, you don't say. All right, ninety nine. That'll have to do. Done. And Uzbek's upset because I'm not giving him anything, so they can fuck off. Fuck off, Uzbek. Go eat a bag of dicks. All right, raise. Now, what raising does is you get monarch points, admin, diplo, and military, and money, and horde unity. So I was okay with taking that option to lower horde unity because we're just gonna get it back. It's fine. And then once you've raised it, then you core it. Because it's cheaper that way.
Although you can't raise it if it's already down to three developments. <laughs> uh, like Rin here, the province I declared for, you can't raise it because the development is so low. That's okay. Yeah, a lot of these provinces are real crap. Can't raise very many of them. That's too bad, because it means we're not getting very many points here. Monarch points. All right, so Uzbek is probably going to break our alliance. They don't trust us anymore. I don't really care. Uh, we're going to work on the Ottomans. That's the one I want. What do you say? No? Although he's close. That's pretty close. 39 out of 49 is pretty damn close. Uh, we should really see if we can rival the Tim Tims. Because I think... I think... This rivaling of no guy is going to go away because they're much smaller than they were previously. All right, revolt risk looks fine. So let's see if we can get the Ottomans in an alliance. Diplomat come home, very nice. Uh, I want to beat up Riazan like right now, but I. Here we go. Did we lose tribal feud? Okay. Maybe. Oh, it's close. Come on, man. What about a marriage? Can we start off with a marriage? No, we can't start off with a marriage. Hmm. Kill Kazan before they're too weak to rival. They're already too weak to rival. I mean, like, I could declare a war, but that wouldn't really do much good. You want access? No? Hmm. That's 100% war score. What's the peace deal? Uzbek wants a marriage. Fuck off. I'm surprised I can still rival no guy. They're so small. How the hell can I still rival you? Like, normally, once you eat half of a nation like that and take their capital, you can't rival them anymore. But apparently, I can still rival them for some reason. I don't know. I just can. Huh. And I can't swap out manually until, like, 15 years have gone by. Well, that sucks. I need to, what I need to do is set the Timurids as a rival, but I can't do that right now. What's this? Mongolia joined Oirat in a war against Uzbek. Uzbek started the Uzbek conquest of Oirat. Okay, uh, Oirat's losing a war right now to Chagtai. No, he's winning a war. No, he's winning a war against Chagtai. Whatever, he's in a war. So no guy's taking advantage of that. That's fine. When Muscovy peaced out with Kazan, declare on Kazan. Okay. Oh, so that we don't lose the, the rival bonus. Right, get the power projection going. That's a good idea. Very good idea. Just to full annex him. Yep, I like the idea. Of course, some more lands, please. Why aren't you piecing out? Oh, because Timurids are in the war. And Crimea's in the war. Oh, he has to go beat up Crimea. Okay. <laughs> I guess. Go beat up Crimea. Oh, he's in Crimea's capital. Oh, God. Man, I really want to. I really want to get this alliance with the Ottomans. I feel if I if I wait, then I can get it. But if I don't wait, like if I go to war with Riazan right now, I could be throwing away my chances. I really don't want to throw away my chances. Oh, it's so close. Wait, I thought we were improving relations this whole time. We weren't really. All right, I feel like an idiot now. I was 100% sure we were improving relations that entire time, and we weren't. Wow. Wow. All right, um, do I want to lower funding on the army? No. Oh, he's so close to an alliance. Fast forward. All right, QQ just vassalized Georgia. That's fine. Wait, it was 40 out of 49. Now it's... 40 out of 51. He must have built some army or something. Or a navy. Probably a navy. We'll get there. Come hell or high water, we'll get there. 43. Our cores are coming in too. That's nice. Kind of weird seeing Kazan like that. Without peace. That should be peacing out, right? All right, we've got our claims on Riazan. Perhaps I should just go get that done. Um, 
Hmm. When can I do this again? 55. Seven years. 58. No, 55. Seven years before I can do that again. Alright, tell you what. We're going to go beat up Riazan, and then we'll consider it again. Riazan wants an alliance. That's not going to happen, dude. Alright, Ottomans should probably ally us after this war, I'm guessing. What is our force limit anyway? 22. Alright, let's build another cav. Another two cav. So what we're doing here is we're encouraging him to come into my lands, because if we fight on my lands, we're going to have a much better time than fighting on his lands. And the cores are in. Good. Everything except Utva. And these two. Okay. No, don't run away. Come back. I want you to come back, Riazan, so we can fight on the steps. Alright, looks like he's ready to go. We'll party in Tambov. Ninth and twelfth. One, two, three, go. Twelfth, thirteenth. God damn it, game. Whatever, it's fine. Hopefully we roll well. If we roll well, we can squish. Nice. Oh my god, he's gonna squish. Yep. <laughs> That felt good. Okay, Siege Pip. Siege Pip take the soldiers to his capital. We're going to need a couple more dudes in there because it's a it's a fort, unfortunately. So send a couple more cap. And the rest of us can just party. Done. Done, done, done. How are we looking? 46. We're really close. 46 out of 48. Oh, man. So good. I know it's time, so why don't we call an episode here? Thanks for watching, guys. I've been Shen, you've been you. Come back next time, what will be annexing Riazan, and hopefully getting an alliance with the Ottomans, and then we can go to war with the Timurids. That'd be great. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Have a good day.